turn in your Bibles to Psalms 139. We're going to go to the Lord for a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, right now. We just want to thank you, praise, glorify, and magnify your name. We ask, Lord, that you will move according to your perfect will. Give us ears to hear the word of God, our heart to receive it, and our mind to be obedient unto it, that we may be what you would have us to do in these last years and days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our subject for tonight is God knows you. God knows you. God knows you. I'd like you to repeat after me. God knows me. God knows me. Amen. Can you repeat that again? God knows me. One more time. God, God knows, knows me. me. So 
something takes time. It takes time, it takes effort. Nobody builds a house in a day, am I right? right. I mean, unless you're on a, a web page or something, building a house like that, but other than that, if you're gonna really build a house, you're not gonna build a house in a day. That's impossible. Now they're building them faster now than they built them years ago. And that's because they use different types of material. Um, I wouldn't say they're as solid as the materials that they used to use before. Um, nor would I necessarily say that the houses that they build now are more durable. Mm -hmm. But in some aspects, they would say that they are, and that um, they have more capability mm -hmm. of um, kind of bending somewhat. Mm -hmm. They have more give to them. Mm -hmm. They have more give to them. Opposed to the older building, I love, I love old, Me too. old stuff. Mm -hmm. They get strong, it's sturdy. Yeah. Um, but opposed to that, because why I say what I'm saying is because the the, the sturdiness mm -hmm. of uh, our buildings, the old buildings, because of the way they are built. If you have an earthquake. They don't give, so they crack and they break. They don't really give. Whereas uh, what they build now, they have more give. So in some aspects, people might say, well, I'd rather have one of those homes. And then there are some of us that says, I really would rather have the older buildings because they're more durable. Mm -hmm. And they stand, you know, I can't do that. They can weather a storm. They yeah. can weather a storm, um, but something like an earthquake and shaking the ground um, by not giving much, more than likely, then you're going to have some cracks throughout the walls and maybe a foundation, whatever. Okay. But back to building, building. It still takes time to build. Still takes time to build. Now, why do you think it's necessary to build with the Lord? Why is it necessary to build? But then when we say we need to build so that we can stand, what is it that we need to build on in order to stand? Yes, Sister Alma. The rock, Jesus. We need to build on the rock, which is Jesus, because he is the firm foundation. If we build on anything else, then the house is going to come down when a storm arises when the tests, trials, and tribulations come and beat upon the house because they are going to come. They are going to come. <clears throat> now, the wonderful thing about knowing God knows you, when you get in the storm of life, you know he knows where you are. Mm. And I'm not just talking about the fact that you are in a storm. Right. No, no, no. I'm talking about personally. Mm -hmm. See, put yourself back in the equation. Mm -hmm. He knows where you are individually mm -hmm. in that storm, inside of your person, inside of your being. Because we can be around a whole and nobody know where we are inside. Because you could be smiling, you could be speaking in other tongues, you could be running around church, you could be dancing, but nobody knows where you really are. They just think whatever they see on the outside is where you must be. Amen. Am I correct? Amen. They don't know that perhaps the smile that you have on the outside, you're covering up. Uh, try not to cry or something like that. That's it. Have you ever smiled when you really felt like you was 
ready to cry? Yes. 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 And the people around you, they probably thought you was happy. But that wasn't where you were. No, you were in a different place. You were in a sad place. Yes. But God knew where you were. So if nobody else knows where you are at any given time, God knows where you are. And though you may also feel lost, because sometimes you can feel lost within your own person. Mm. Anybody ever been there? Mm -hmm. You wonder where you at yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God has to show you where you are. He has to reveal to you where you are. Because with God, you're never lost. Because he knows where you are at all times. There's not a time that someone can question the Lord and say, well, where is Sister Linda? Mm -hmm. And he's not able to tell them exactly where she is at that moment in time. So the fact that sometimes you might feel lost, even within yourself, and God knows where you are, let us understand even the better that there are things about you that you do not know, and only God knows.
and God said that he rejected him and they wanted to go down to Jesse's house and anoint him another king. Mm. And when he got down there, uh, he asked Jesse to bring his sons uh, before him because the Lord, you know, had, the Lord had chosen one of them. Um, mm -hmm. So he was going to pour the oil on the individual that God had chosen. Well, the first son came and he looked the part. Mm. He looked kingly. He looked kingly. But the thing about God is he goes deeper than the surface. And, and that's a part, that's that's a part of it. So let, let me kind of go into my my first scripture because I don't want to go into everything that we'll talk about and not have read the scripture. The first scripture, um, again, is Psalms 139. Verse 1. Amen. Here, David says, O Lord, thou hast searched me. Well, stop right there with the searched me. Thou hast searched me. The search examined thoroughly in order to find something or someone. Thoroughly means he's examined us completely with regard now listen to this to every detail Every detail, not superficial, mm -hmm. superficial means on the surface, or partial, existing only in part. No, God examines us or has examined us completely, totally, mm -hmm. in detail. You know how people say they take a fine tooth comb to a thing, put it under a microscope, because if you're just looking at it with your natural eye, a lot of things you miss. But if you take something and put it underneath of a microscope, it amplifies what's there. It makes it bigger so that you can really see what your naked eye normally may not see. So uh, God has eyes, I, I use this, we know it's better than that, but God has eyes like a magnifying glass. Yeah. So when he looks at us, he don't just see surface. He goes to the innermost part of our being. He goes deep with knowing us. And the beautiful thing about it is he goes deep with knowing each and every individual that walks on the planet Earth. Each person is significant to God. Now you would think that being so many people, why would you bother with everybody? Why is everybody important? Because he created everyone for his own purpose. Yeah. Why did he create everyone? For his own purpose. Why did he create everyone? For his own purpose. Why did he create everyone? For his own purpose. Do we believe that? Yes. Yes. I do. That God created us. For his own purpose. Mm. Not for what someone else wants for us. But for what he wants for us. Because you know, some people do have their own specific agendas for your life. 
God? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know that there are actual people that try to live through somebody else. Mm. Mm -hmm. Some people do that. Mm -hmm. Some people do that. Some parents try to live through their children. The way, not the way, but what they would prefer for their children's lives. Now, I'm not, when I say prefer, I'm not talking about righteousness and unrighteousness, because you should want righteousness mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about that. But let's say, um, let's say your purpose in life is to be a singer, but your parents want you to be a doctor. And so they do everything in their power to make you be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Even though that's not your purpose. It's not your God-given purpose. Some people tend to do those types of things. Mm -hmm. Now, the best thing to do when you have kids is to see the direction that the child is steering toward. And then start helping to groom the child in that direction. Um, that's kind of natural. It's just kind of flowing. I'm not talking again about righteous and unrighteous. All right. Sometimes God will specifically show you um, what's in the individual, um, and then you want to capitalize on that. It doesn't mean that that's the only thing that they're capable of doing. But it means that that is inside of them. It means that that's inside of them. And so we should do our best um, to try to uh, promote those things. Okay? Because God knows what he designed each individual um, to be. Or who he designed them to be. Okay? We don't get to choose that. We don't get to choose that. I don't get to choose that. Man, one day I wanted you to be a doctor. Why do you have to be a doctor? I mean, I might want you to be it. I might say that, you know, but I don't, you, you don't have to be that if God didn't choose you to be a doctor. Mm. You know? Sometimes some preachers want their kids to be preachers. Now, most of the time I will say that the kids are probably, they probably are because Things tend to run in families. Mm -hmm. They do. You can just mm -hmm. look. Yeah. God seems to deposit um, certain things in certain families. It just runs through the family line. It runs through the family line. Mm -hmm. Like you have some families, they have musicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of their families, their family members are musicians. Because God has deposited the gift in their family, through their family line, of being able to play instruments. So let's say you have a family that's gifted to play instruments, and then you have another family um, that's gifted in art. Mm -hmm. We don't have the right to try to make the family that's gifted in art play instruments okay. if that's not what they're designed to do. Now sometimes we're designed to do multiple things. Okay? But if that's not what they're designed, you, you need to be playing the instruments. Why? That's not in me to play the instruments. Mm. Art is in me to do. God inspires me through art. So we need to know the places that God inspired us. This is self-discovery again. Where are you inspired? The Bible said there's a spirit in man, and the very God gives it inspiration. So, what area or areas in life are you inspired in? I'm not saying when you try to put yourself and fit yourself, but where are you inspired? Without even having to search for that. Just 
there inside of you. Mm -hmm. It's part of your purpose. Part of your purpose. And so we should want to cultivate that. We should want to cultivate what's inside of us. Not looking to try to be like somebody else. Do what somebody else is doing. Because sometimes that can really try to get in, get, it, get in our way and kind of block it. And I'm sure some of us have been guilty of that. Why that look better? <laughs> to who? Not to God. Because if that's not what he put inside of you, you are going to try to do that. It's not what you do. In God's outside. Because that means that now we are failing to do what our purpose is. And we already said we were created for his purpose. So when we try to fulfill somebody else's purpose instead of our own purpose, we are holding ourselves back. We are wasting time. Precious. We're wasting precious time. We got one time to do this. I don't think we're coming back as a bird or nothing like that mm. to do this over. You wouldn't be doing this if it was a bird. Anyway. Right? That's right. <laughs> you know? So, we have one time to do this. And we don't have a lot of time to do it. So we have to stop wasting the time and put our efforts where they need to be. Okay, again, oh Lord, thou has searched me, examined me thoroughly, completely, um, regarding every detail about me, not on the surface and not, uh, not in part. Not in part, you didn't partly examine me. You didn't just examine my mind. Mm. But you also examined my emotions. Mm. You also examined my physicality. You examined everything there is, was, and will be about me. Now that's how extreme uh, God has taken that. Everything that is about me, everything that was about me, and everything that will be about me. Everything that will be. Because all of that is going to make up me and totality. The person that I was designed to be, created to be. Hopefully, we will reach our full potential. Hopefully, we will live out our purpose, which is God's purpose for placing us here on the earth. Period. I listened to um, a Bible class that Bishop Gates um, taught, and I think he might have taught it on the 24th. I think it might have been then. You know, not perfectly sure. <laughs> okay? Um, but in the Bible class, and it, it really was good, it was a good Bible class, and something that we heard. We've heard it before, but it just really was impactful mm -hmm. um, for me at that particular time. And he was talking about how we are born in certain situations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we have no control over. Mm -hmm. Don't have any control. Who had control over the family that you were born in? Who had control over who's your mother and who's going to be your father? You picked them 
Did you have control over the neighborhood you was going to live in? How about the situation and the circumstances that you were brought up in? No. None of us had control over those things. Did God know those things before he brought us here? Do you believe that God purposefully put you in that thing? Or oh, you think you made a mistake? <laughs> because you were born out of all the sperm cells. You made you know, there's so many that floats up that fallopian tube and tries to get into that egg. They be trying to get in. They be trying to get in there. They be trying to hurry up and get up there. You know. But you outswim them all. Mm -hmm. Or he gave you enough strength to penetrate the egg and to get inside. Mm -hmm. You! Mm -hmm. Specifically. So, for all of that to transpire, I have to believe that God wanted you here. Mm. You. Because you're the one that entered the egg. You. Not somebody else, because somebody else was trying to get in there. Mm. A whole lot of somebody was trying to be born. That's significant. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's, that's something important for us to think about because sometimes um, people say, well, I don't even know why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I wish I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's true. A lot of people that sit here right today, mm -hmm. y'all know the truth, mm -hmm. there's probably been a time when you wish that you was not here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God had a purpose for bringing you, you, mm. you. I, I want, I want to emphasize that you here, and His purpose was not so that you could just, oh my God, I just gone through all this in life, and you know everything's just bad, and I don't see no good, you know. No, no. The Lord said that He knows the plans that He has. Right? He, he knows the plans. Yes. And they're for good and not evil. To give us an expected, his expected end. Because the devil can put expectations in your life that are that are for your doom, gloom and doom. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be like this. It's never going to get better. Or oh, you might as well just lay down and die. It's over for you. Negative thinking. We don't think that God has anything better than to bring us here so that we can just have a horrible life. What's the purpose of that? What, 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 what would God really get out of that? What glory would God get out of that? If we're placed here for the glory of God, what glory will God get out of that? I don't really see none. That's it. You don't think that even though we go through different things that God want to be known, that he will bring us out, that he will deliver us, that he will heal us, that he will rescue us, that he's on our side, that he hears our prayer, that he opens doors, that he makes ways out of no way. Mm -hmm. Now he's getting some serious look. Not going to let whatever's going on stop me 
Because when you're committed to someone, you go through the thick, thin, the up, the down, the in, the out, the hills, the valley. You do all of that. Right? You stick with them like you say through thick and thin. Now, that's what God does for us. But how many people thin out when things start happening? And they start backing off from God. Mm. Because the devil begins to feed the mind. Mm. Our desire needs to be, I want to know him better. I want to know him better. Now, while we're here right now, before we get our glorified bodies, we're not going to really know him as we are known. But the Bible does say that that time is going to come, that we will know him as we are known. Right now we see through a glass, dark. We don't see everything clear. We don't see everything clear. But I sure want to know him better than I do today. I know, he knows me, but I need to know him even the more. Okay? So now he's, he's searched me out, he's examined me completely, not just on the surface, he's examined me in entirety and not partially. And known me. All right? He has known us. He's known us. Let me. Make sure I've got my thing. Okay. Yes. Go to Jeremiah, the first chapter. Jeremiah, the first chapter. Verse 4 and 5. Let's read that together. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the valley, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, I'm about to sit because this is how we start talking. After God tell us things that he knows, because we already said that he knows us. Right? You already said that God knows everything about us, correct? Yes. Okay. So, being though God knows everything about us, and we said that God knows everything about us, and we are discovering the things about ourselves, mm -hmm. as well as other people are yet discovering things about us. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just crazy. That someone knows you better than you really know yourself. I mean, so much, much, much more. And so when he starts to speak to us about ourselves, we say stuff like this. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. Now I'm going to go back to five when God was talking. God said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. We had eyes, toes, mouth, heart, mm -hmm. liver, kidneys, <laughs> digestive mm -hmm. systems, mm -hmm. nervous system, mm -hmm. nephron systems, mm -hmm. muscles, muscles, sinews, tendons, mm -hmm. fingernails, eardrums, 
completely. I knew your hair, what your hair color was going to be before you came out of the womb. Before a follicle ever grew out of your stock. I knew how much you were going to weigh before they weighed you on the scale. Mm. I knew your eye color, how, what your eye color was going to be. Mm -hmm. You didn't even have eyes. Because again, he says, God knows me. God knows me. So, God is trying to get Jeremiah to a place of understanding the things by being forthcoming, so to speak. I knew you before all of this, and before you came forth out of the womb, I'm I sanctify, I set you apart, I set you aside. Now you came out, you thought you was like everybody else. Because you were doing what everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. But you were not like them. Mm -hmm. But you thought you were. I knew you better than you knew yourself. When you was pulling up on that reefer. Mm -hmm. Shooting those drugs, or popping those pills, mm -hmm. laying with Johnny or laying with Sue. Mm -hmm. You thought that was who you were. Mm -hmm. And that was what you were all about. Mm -hmm. But that's not who I chose you to be. Mm -hmm. I chose you to be a holy and a sanctified vessel mm -hmm. unto me. So even while you were wilding in your sin, I could see a holy and a sanctified vessel unto me. And I knew I was going to bring the change in your life. You had no mind about changing. You liked what you was doing. Now I know sometimes people get to the place where they don't like what they're doing. But believe it or not, There are really people that like sin. <laughs> they love it. They're into it. Deep. They want to do it every day. Mm. They like it. Mm. Okay. And at one time or another, was that not all of us? Mm -hmm. Because sin can be pleasurable to the flesh, mm. yet detrimental to the spirit. When you told somebody off, sometimes you felt good that you told them off. You couldn't wait to tell them off. You wait till they get over here. I got something for them. And boy, did you like them to them when they got over there and you see them. I mean, look at you there. them out some kind of crazy. And mother told me to get out your house. And slam the door behind it, all that kind of stuff. And 
if anybody else was in the house, like, honey, I got them cold dinner. <laughs> I know, I told them all. Hmm, they were crazy. We like that. They were going to make some food. All right. You don't know. All of that. You beat somebody up, you had to oh. tell, you had to let them know. You know, mm. I tore them up. Ooh. I bet you they won't do that again. Yeah. Y'all laughing, giving high five, smiling, all that. I know you did, bro. <laughs> you spanked them. <laughs> sin, loving sin, loving sin. People would run after men or women that seemed like they were hard to get. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me not go, that's the one. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get him. Oh, I'm going to get her. Mm -hmm. I'm going to break them down. <laughs> and when you broke them down, you broke them down. You gloated over that. Honey, nobody else could get them, but I got them. <laughs> nobody else could get them, but I got them. Loving sin. The pleasures of sin last for a season. Yes. And every unjust deed must receive a just recompense of reward. So God knew all of that. He knew he was going to do all of that with all whatever all of that was before he even brought us here. So, when he starts to tell us about ourselves in a positive light, why do we go and reflect back as to why he should not choose me? I'm not the one. I'm definitely not the one. It can't be me. Now, I can see that you Sister Linda, but he should not be choosing me for this. I'm not the only, you know, and I cannot do it. I set you aside, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then you come back and give an excuse why you can't do what God said that he set you here for the purpose of doing. Is something wrong with God's mind? <laughs> he had a purpose in mind, brought us here, did all of that. And now it's impossible for him to bring it to pass in our lives. You think there's something crazy about that? But isn't that the way we think sometimes? Mm -hmm. I don't see myself as that. Mm. I don't see myself as God didn't ask you to see yourself like that at first. He sees you. He mm -hmm. sees you. He knows you. He wants us to give in to his will. Mm. Well, Lord, I don't see it, but if you said it, I believe it. Mm. I'm going to act on it. God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. That's what the old cliche is. But that's really what it needs to be. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. It's not what it looks like. It's not what other people say. Oh, girl. Oh, man, you can't do that. You can't tell me what I can't do when God said it's meant for me to do it. You're the shyest person in the world. How in the world is you going to be ordained <laughs> to go to the nation? You held me all over your nose. <laughs> and you have to, I don't care if I hardly ever open my mouth. I am going to do what God said I am called and chosen to do. He knows how to help me open my mouth. And I'm going to start practicing on opening my mouth. Sometimes you have to force yourself 
when I speak of yourself, you have to force what you are accustomed to, for whatever reason you have become accustomed to it. You have to force yourself in God's direction. Now, some of us, we, we shy people. You know, we're shy people. But if you're a shy person, and God has chosen you to deal with people, you have to be able to deal with people. Am I right? Absolutely. You may be a person um, that likes to be with themselves most of the time. Or okay with it. I'm okay with it. I don't need to talk to people. Um, but you got to be in crowds sometimes. You know? That's where God wants you at. So wherever God wants you, then you should be able to do what he has chosen you to do in that arena because he's going to give you everything that you need to be able to do it. And yes, it may be uncomfortable for you for a while. You have to continue to just do it. Just keep doing it because that's what God has chosen you to do. And then, you know, when you're done with it, you can go back the way you want to be. But that's your purpose. That's why he put as much as he put on the inside of you. It's not so you can just hold it all in. God oh, gave me a whole lot. I got a whole lot. That's how much you have a whole lot. But what are you giving to other people? Mm -hmm. You're going to have all of that, and God just gave you all of that for yourself. You have a whole lot of wisdom. You have a whole lot of knowledge. You have a whole lot of understanding. You know how to get certain things done, but you're not going to help anyone else learn how to get it done. You've matured in certain areas, but you're not going to help anyone else um, learn how to mature in those areas that you're already mature in. You're just going to keep it to yourself. I don't like, I don't like Somebody is waiting. Somebody is there like a sponge, or somebody is there like a a plant that needs to be watered. Mm -hmm. But we got the water. Mm -hmm. We have the water, but we refuse to pour it. Mm -hmm. We refuse to pour it on that poor little plant mm -hmm. so it can survive. Mm -hmm. God's telling him. All of these things concerning himself, and he still comes out of his house to tell God, I cannot do it. And the reason why I can't do it. This is why I can't do it, Lord. This is why I can't do it. Because I'm a child. Mm -hmm. This is why I can't do it, Lord. Because I'm a woman. That's why I can't do it, Lord. I'm a teenager. That's why I can't do it, Lord. They don't like me. <laughs> That's why I can't do it, Lord. I can't stand in front of all those people. That's why I can't walk across the street and um, talk to nobody, Lord. I'm scared. So we have actually talked ourselves out of doing the will of God. Instead of saying, Lord, I know you know me. So if you said it, then that's who I am. That means that you have made me capable of doing the task. And I don't have to see it to believe it. But what I do have to do is I have to step into it. And yes, I do have to maybe study concerning whatever it is. I'm not saying just willy-milly, whatever, and then just 
have a mask going on. That's not what I'm saying at all. Because God gives us preparation time, time for the things that he's choosing us to do. He is downloading into our spirit so that when he wants to call it forth, it's there. It's there. There's a reason why the Bible says to study. To show yourself a reason of God, work your knees, not to be ashamed, write your body, the word of truth. That's the reason why the Bible tells you to study, and that's everybody that needs to study. Everybody, every saint needs to study the word of God. But especially those that have to deliver the word of God. Because they don't know when they're going to have to deliver it. We think, oh, oh, wait a minute. What's my name on the list? <laughs> God might not wait till your list time. It could be right in the midst of a conversation with some people or family members. You're just sitting around the table or something, sitting in the living room, and all of a sudden, here it comes. <laughs> and this is your time to share the word of God. God said, this is your time, this is your opportunity to start talking. But if you haven't been studying the word of God, if you haven't been feasting on the word of God, and filled yourself up with the word of God, how are you going to know what to say to give unto them that's in different situations? Because everything don't apply to everything. But if you haven't been in the word of God, and if somebody's in a depressed situation, how can you go on the word of God and help them? Think about it. If somebody have a, a, a spirit of hatred, how can you go on the word of God and help them? Somebody have an unforgiveness in their spirit, how can you go on the word of God and help them? Different situations, different scenarios. Not only that, let's say you, you're in a church environment. Somebody gets sick. They were supposed to go. They got sick. Well, somebody sick last week, and you're the only one there. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. What? Oh, my God. Please, huh? Yes, wait a minute. Um, let me go and pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you. Let me pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> in your mind, you're really bad and for real. Like, God, please, please, because I don't have enough to say. I don't have no notes. What in the world am I going to I can't get up here. You are on the spot. You didn't prepare for it specifically. But you should be prepared. You should basically only have to say, Lord, what is it that you want me to say? And he should be able to start speaking to you and giving you the word of God. You have got to stay in the word to carry out the mission. Whenever you have to carry out the mission, you got to stay in the word to do that. We got to stay in the word to be able to give an answer to people that need help. You got to stay in the word to be able to do that. And then we pray and ask God, what will you have me to say? But he needs something to work with. Mm -hmm. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to your remembrance, but there's no remembering if you never put it in, right? Right. Now I know God did miracles and He can do that. He can do that. But we definitely can't expect that that's exactly what God's going to be doing when He already told us what we needed to do. He knows us. I'm, I'm not going to. Um, get much further into that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, he knows us. 
He knows what he's chosen us to do. He knows our background history. He knows the families that we came up in. He knew how bad it was going to be in some cases and so forth and so on. None of that is an excuse for not fulfilling the purpose. Not seeking. That, that, that's what the bishop was talking about. None of that is an excuse why I can't fulfill my purpose. Well, my prayer was an alcoholic. So I, said, I knew they was going to be an alcoholic. I, put, I let you get born in a fantasy, but it was an alcoholic. No. That doesn't stop you from fulfilling your purpose. You can't tell me that you can't do what I chose you to do mm. because that's how your family was. Because I knew what family I put you in. I want you to take that background history and use it for good. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Do we really believe that? That's even our past. God takes our past. Okay? Because there are so many people in the world today that are dealing with what you came up in. They're dealing with that. And that's why we got to stop having the pity party. Because we're sad in so many pity parties that we can't help nobody. We can't help nobody because we're so busy focused on ourselves. And God has said, I chose you to help people. I want you to help them with your experiences. I'm going to need you to dry your eyes, dry up your tears. Let me heal you. And sometimes it's going to be healed as you go. Not instantaneously, but start walking toward the purpose that I have for your life. Get involved with your purpose. Because those excuses are not going to work for God. That's why I'm like this. I can't be nothing else because, hey, that's how my family was. Nobody in my family was what you what you say about me. Nobody. So I know I'm not going to be able to do it, Lord. And I'm not saying that we take these things lightly, okay? Because some of us have had some very hard times in life, okay? There are people that have been abused, you know, coming up physically, mentally, emotionally, all of that. So we're not overlooking those things. We're not overlooking those things. But what I'm saying, and even as the bishop was saying, None of those things can keep you back from fulfilling your purpose. Mm -hmm. Because God has designed you to fulfill it. And God is not going to give you a purpose and then allow anything mm -hmm. to be able to stop you from fulfilling it. Absolutely nothing. No human being, no demonic spirit can stop you or I from fulfilling our God-given purpose. But we can stop ourselves. So we need to stop looking and saying, well, maybe it's that. That's why I can't go forward. I can't get over it. That's the devil. We can get over it. And we need to let the devil know if need be. Oh, I'm going to get over this. Mm. And I'm going to move on because I can't stay in no one place. I've got to fulfill the purpose that God has given me. Lord, I trust you. I believe you. You do your work. I'm going to just keep on walking. Amen. I'm going to walk by faith. And I'm not going to walk by sight. Because I know that you know me. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to ask if you would, if you desire to give an offering, amen, on tonight. And you would go to Give It a Five, Solid Rock, Apostolic Faith.
picture there. And you can go to the Bible study, Bible class, God bless you all, um, tab. Tap right on there and give your offering. Okay? Um, there's several things in there that you can give your offering in, but this is Bible study. And I think it also has something that says other. You can put that in terms of if you like as well. All right? And you can also go to Cash App if you want to give by way of Cash App. That's Solid Rock A F C. Solid Rock A F C. Dollar sign, sorry. Dollar sign. Solid Rock A F C. Again, dollar sign for Cash App. Dollar sign. Solid Rock A F C. Amen. Those of you that are in house. Desire to give um, um, cash or something like that, then feel free to come and place your funds in the basket that Brother McGann earlier was holding. Somebody think of a song about God knowing us? Can somebody think of one? He knows my name. He knows my name. That is definitely one. Yeah. <laughs> he knows my name. Go ahead and sing it out. Let me sing it out.